It is just really a matter of convenience that people with a lot of education try and bring these things and separate them. Turn with me to Luke chapter 8, please. Luke. Oh, I'm sorry. There's more in Colossians. We got, uh, we got firstborn of every creature. Let's go 16. For by him were all things created. Well, isn't that strange? In verse 15, they're talking about firstborn, and then in verse 16, they're talking about the creation. So what timing is, is going on here? Is this speaking of firstborn of Mary's birth? Or is this speaking firstborn of creation? This is all around the creation period. You can't take verse 15 and hold it separate from verse 16. For by him all things were created that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, showing that he was first over principalities, first over powers, first over governments, that he will become our soon coming and reigning King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. So he's not only preeminent over things, he is before verse 17. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have, what? The preeminence. Interesting, now Paul uses that word preeminence. He could have said begotten instead of preeminent there. It seems Paul knows the difference between the word preeminent and begotten. So all you Greek scholars out there, take note, Paul was one of the most educated men in languages, and he knew the difference between preeminent and firstborn, and he recorded them separately here. And if he meant to say preeminent in verse 15, he would have said preeminent, but he meant to say firstborn, so he said firstborn, because Jesus is firstborn of the dead, and Jesus is the firstborn of all things first to come forth from God. And because he has all that preeminence, it says in verse 19, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. In Jesus, the, everything, the whole Godhead would dwell. That's why he inherited the title Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Because at baptism, when we are baptized, the minister buries us in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Our baptism is Lord Jesus Christ. Lord is the title of the Father. Jesus is the title of the Son. And Christ is anointed the title of the Spirit. Verse 9 of chapter 2, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. John 8, 42, sorry, Luke, where was that scripture now? John 8, 42. Jesus saith unto them, If God were the father, your Father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. And 16, John 16, verse 28. I came forth from the Father, and then come, come into the world. Again I leave the world, and go to the Father. Yeah. 
We have John, back to John chapter 8 again. And that reads, then he said, Jesus unto them, When you've lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am He, and that I do nothing of Myself, but as My Father hath taught Me, I speak these things. And He that sent Me is with Me, the Father hath not left Me alone, for I do always those things that please Him. So clearly, God and Jesus are not equal. If they were, Jesus would just do his own thing, make his own decisions. But he says in verse 28, I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. If God were a three-part God, one-third Father, one-third Son, one-third Holy Spirit, Jesus would not have to take teaching from the Father because they'd all just do, he'd just do what he had to do. 